This is Optimal Health Daily, episode 1030. Monty Python and the Holy Abs by Steve Cam of nerdfitness.com and I'm Dr. Neil. Hello, happy Saturday. Hope your weekend is off to a great start and welcome back to Optimal Health Daily or OHD where I act as your narrator of popular health and fitness blogs. Now, don't forget, we have five shows covering a bunch of different topics. Just search for Optimal Living Daily in any podcast app to find them. All right, let's keep this intro nice and short and get to another Saturday show and start optimizing your life. Monty Python and the Holy Abs by Steve Cam of nerdfitness.com. Okay, Monty Python, grab your coconuts, load up your horse, and get started on your quest for those rock-hard abs you've always wanted. I'm gonna guess for most of you, abs are the holy grail of physical fitness. Ryan Reynolds had abs that were so defined in Blade Three or Blade Trinity that one writer assumed he had ab implants. The actors in the movie 300 became famous, not just for their biceps and pecs, but more for their abs that look painted on. Everybody is after them, but nobody can find them. So what's the deal? Are people looking in the wrong place? Or are some people just genetically blessed with abs and others aren't? Let's get one thing out of the way first. 95% of all fitness marketers are full of you-know-what. Think of the last 10 infomercials you've seen on TV, and no, Snuggies don't count. I guarantee two-thirds of them are designed to give you a flatter stomach in just a few minutes a day, three times a week. Let me know if any of these sound familiar. The Hawaii Chair. The Flex Belt. The Ab Coaster. The Ab Circle Pro. Crunchless Abs. These are the ones I can remember off the top of my head. They're all designed to target your upper and lower abs, work those obliques, and build a set of sexy abs you always wanted. New ab machines pop up every other day, and unfortunately, people keep buying them. You're like Sir Galahad, chasing the holy grail into a building of ridiculously attractive women. Sure, it might make you feel better about yourself in the short term, but it ain't gonna get you what you really want in the long run. So why don't these machines work? Muscle is different from fat. If you identify as female, you've probably said, I want to tone up at some point in the past. If you identify as male, you probably want to get ripped. Here's how it works. You have your bones, then muscle on top of your bones, then on top of the muscle, you have fat, and on top of the fat, you have skin. These are completely different materials. Your muscle doesn't turn into fat if you stop working out, and your fat doesn't turn into muscle if you exercise all day long. Dr. Neil here for a quick aside. We actually talked about this very topic earlier this week in episode 1027, Can You Turn Fat Into Muscle? All right, back to the post. If you just eat better, you will lose fat, but you won't build muscle. If you eat like but lift weights like crazy, you could have a body like Ryan Reynolds trapped inside a body that looks like Jabba the Hutt. What this means for your stomach. It is 100% impossible for you to spot remove fat. If you have fat on your gut, doing crunches all day long will not get rid of the fat. Depending on your genetic makeup, your body stores fat in various amounts in certain locations. For those born female, it's usually thighs and butt. For those born male, it's usually the gut. You have absolutely no control where the fat gets stored, and you have no control where the fat comes off your body once you start eating right and exercising. So you know what that means? 10,000 crunches a day will do almost nothing to reduce your beer gut, other than help with the calories you burn doing the exercises. The crunches will build up the muscle under your fat, but that fat isn't really going anywhere. So what's the secret? I don't want to spill the beans. Get on with it. Yes, get on with it. Okay, I'll tell you. Your abs are a direct correlation of your body fat percentage. Boring, I know. Guys, unless you have a body fat percentage below 10%, you will not see your abs. Gals, unless you have a body fat percentage below 14%, you won't see your abs. You probably have a great set of abs right now if you do any sort of weightlifting. You just can't find them underneath the fat. This means that if you're interested in toning up or getting ripped, it is 95% diet. If you're serious about developing a good-looking stomach, it all comes down to what you eat. Because you need to get to a really low body fat percentage, you need to be extremely dedicated with each meal. It's boring, it's a lot of work, and it's really difficult. This is why most people don't have abs. Here's my advice for all of those ab machines. Don't spend a single dime on an ab machine ever. It's a complete waste of time. Planks, side planks, and crunches on a stability ball are more than enough to work your abs. Exercises like squats and deadlifts 
work your abs and core like crazy. These are the only two exercises I do to work on my abs. Enough about exercises though. Let's talk about what you're eating. Here's how to fix your diet. Analyze everything you eat and find out where you can cut calories. You can't target specific areas of fat on your body. As you exercise more and eat healthier, you'll lose body fat all over. It'll probably come off your stomach last, so be patient and stick with it. Once your body fat percentage drops into the single digits, you'll start to see those abs you quested after for years. Okay, so let's review what you need to do if you want a good-looking stomach. One, eat less. Seriously. As they say, abs aren't made in the gym, they're made in the kitchen, which is a really dumb phrase, but 100% true. If you want to see them, you need to drop your body fat below 10%. So start by eating less. This is 90% of the battle. But more important than eating less is eating healthier. You can do so by cutting the crap out of your diet. No processed foods, no liquid calories, lots of veggies and lean meats. Fruits and nuts are good too. I cut my body fat percentage almost in half in three months, from 11% down to 6% following this type of diet. Next, sweat more. So, you want to impress chicks on the beach, huh? Run. Better yet, sprint on days you're not lifting weights or doing a body weight workout. Have you ever seen an Olympic sprinter not have crazy abs? Interval training for the win. Next, build your core. Squats and deadlifts work your core like crazy. If you're not a fan of these two exercises, and you should be, do exercises like planks, side planks, stability ball crunches, not crunches on the ground, and jumping knee tucks. Notice, there isn't a single mention of a normal setup or crunch. Your abs are muscles too, so you don't need to work them two days in a row. They need time to recover. Honestly though, these exercises are such an afterthought compared to your diet when it comes to your abs. So how can you tell when you've got abs? The easiest, most accurate way to determine if you have abs is this. Look in the mirror. Do you see abs? Well, then you have a body fat percentage below 10%. Don't see abs? You don't have a low enough body fat percentage yet. It's science. Now, if you're looking for a more accurate measurement of your body fat percentage, I recommend picking up an AccuMeasure body fat caliper. It's super cheap, and it works just as well as any of the other way more expensive methods. Good luck in your quest, brave knight. You just listened to the post titled Monty Python and the Holy Abs by Steve Cam of nerdfitness.com. Dr. Neil here for my commentary. All right, so I have a story I need to share with you. Something that only those I am closest to know about. Something for which my friends still tease me about to this day. So you remember at the beginning of the post, Steve mentioned Ryan Reynolds' abs? Well, based on one of Arnold Schwarzenegger's recommendations, I used to keep pictures on my bathroom mirror of physiques I wanted to someday have. The idea behind this, according to Arnold, is to provide inspiration and help keep you reaching for your goals. Well, one such picture I had was of Ryan Reynolds from the very same movie Steve mentioned, Blade Trinity. Now, before I printed this picture and taped it to my bathroom mirror, I didn't remove his face. So, I am now known to those closest to me as the guy with a Ryan Reynolds bromance. You know what though? I've come to own it. Back to developing your abs. Steve mentioned deadlifts and squats. Well, that's really interesting because I recently learned of a crazy new move that Kumail Nanjiani used to help him get his chiseled abs. Not sure who Kumail Nanjiani is? Take a moment and perform a quick internet search. And no, I haven't added his picture to my bathroom mirror for inspiration, yet. His trainer had him perform a move called Zercher Squats. You may wonder, again, how can a squat possibly lead to a six-pack? Well, it's true. When you do a standard squat or even a front squat, you've got to tighten your core. You've got to tighten your abs so that your form is perfect. Well, this squat is unique. Instead of placing the barbell behind your neck or resting on your shoulders for like a front squat, you hold it in front of you in the crook of your elbows. So for a Zercher squat, you end up bending your elbows and cradling the barbell just below chest height. Now, I recommend you start with just the barbell, but you can add weights to it when the move becomes easy. All right, so imagine you're cradling the barbell just below your chest. Then what you do while keeping your core and abs tight, you squat down as you normally would with perfect form and then stand back up. That's one rep. And that is a Zercher squat. Try it and see. Your abs will be begging for mercy in no time. 
Now, one other thing I must mention, guys, we can go pretty low in our body fat percentage and it doesn't really affect our health. We can get as low as 3% body fat with no health consequences. Gals, don't go below 8% body fat. That's because that may stop production of certain hormones that are crucial for your health and wellness. All right, that'll do it from me for today. I hope you have a great weekend if you're listening in real time and I'll see you back here again tomorrow for the Sunday show and where your optimal life awaits.